Hey guys, it's Powell and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, I'm doing something a little bit different. As you can tell by the title, I am going to do a little paint with me kind of video and show you my process as I attempt a watercolor pet portrait. Today I am painting my dog, Morty. Here is Morty, he is my little French bulldog. All right, I'll let you go. He's getting closer and closer to being one year old and I really wanted to make a painting of him. I don't make a whole lot of art for me anymore and it's mostly just commissions or what people like will ask me to do for them. So just making this for me and Morty is definitely something I'm looking forward to. I cannot wait to get started. All right, that's enough chit chat. Let's take it to the overhead view so you guys can watch me as I paint my dog, Morty. Welcome to the overhead view. So as you can see, I already kind of have a sketch of Morty down based off of a picture that I took not too long ago. I'll put that on the screen just so you guys can see what the reference image is. He looks so good in that picture. I literally, it's like the perfect picture to go off of. He looks like a model, love it. He's stunning. But with this sketch, I feel like I went a little bit too far with it. So I'm actually gonna erase most of it. So I'm just picking from my Prismacolor colored pencils. I am gonna choose a soft brown. This one is Sienna Brown. And then a black, because he does have some black on him. And then this pink color. So those are the colored pencils I'm going to use. I'm just going to erase the majority of these lines and shading so I can have a more like stripped down sketch and I can paint without having to paint over pencil which will smear with the water. It comes with like this little water tray, but I actually just have a mason jar with all the brushes I'm planning on using. I'm sitting with some water, but to get started, I'm going to start mixing some colors. Um, his fur is a light tan color for the majority of him, so I'm gonna try and mix that color now. The brush I'm using, it's this brand called Royal and Lang Nickel. Um, it's a size for a round brush. I'm just gonna use it because it's kind of, it's not super small, it's not super big, but it picks up water really well. I'm just gonna wet all the colors I think I'm gonna use. All right, so for mixing his fur, I'm gonna start off with this yellow ochre shade. Now I'm gonna add some burnt sienna. I really like the brownness of the burnt sienna but it's a little warm. I'm gonna add some burnt umber. It's just continuously adding water to it because I don't want it to be particularly opaque because it is just gonna be the first flush of color on all the brown bits of him. And I think it's a little warm, so what I'm gonna add is some ultramarine blue. will definitely cool it down. You just keep like adding the color that it needs. And because it's so watered down, you can really see like the color that it's gonna be once it's washed on the page. I'm adding a little bit more blue to cool it down a little bit. Oh, that really did it. If you think about the color wheel, when you're adding a color and you want to desaturate it a little bit or something like that, you're gonna add a, the complementary color and that is like literally the perfect color. I'm going to 
put this brush back in my mason jar and now I'm going to get this large flat brush and I'm just gonna wet all of the brown sections of Morty. I am consistently wetting my brush and just making sure that these areas are nice and damp not too wet so that there's puddles or anything on the page but just keeping it nice and wet so the color applies really nice and smooth and spreads evenly once i put it on there all right so now i'm picking up that color that we just mixed and I'm just gonna apply it and I'm spreading it. I, it's gonna be really light, but that is the goal, is to have a really light flush of this color because we're building up on this. With watercolors, I tend to work light to dark because you can't really go from dark to light. Once you put a color down, it's only gonna get darker from there, really. start wetting his mask. I'm not doing his nose, not just yet, because his nose actually has a different undertone than his mask. We gotta work a little bit quickly because I did not mix this color beforehand, but a quick black will do. I'm gonna do a more browny black because I'm trying to keep it warm. So I'm just doing burnt umber and ultramarine blue and adding a little bit of burnt sienna to warm it up. So until I get a nice warm kind of gray shade, I'm going to keep mixing. So right now it's still pretty brown, so I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. And then that should be good. So that's a nice warm gray color. It is very much darker than obviously the other colors that we did, but I'm gonna use the same color. I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna add water to it to make it less opaque. And I'm going to go right where I know he has that darker fur. The next place I'm gonna add this dark color is with the smaller brush. I'm just going to go in where the darker fur is on the folds. So I'm wetting his folds where there is darker fur. All right, now just picking up as much of that color as I can. So that is the very base of the colors that I'm going to be obviously working from. Right now I'm just going to go in on his chin area where the pink color is. I'm just going to get a little bit of this cadmium red and then taking a little bit of a lizard crimson. I just wet that area, so I'm just tapping it in, wetting my brush to remove pigment, drying it, and then tapping it. So it's kind of, it picks up the color, but it's not putting it down as much as it's picking it up, if that makes sense. All right, so now there's just like that little pink section on his chin. It's one of my favorite parts about Morty is his little pink chin. So now that that is done, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go in on his folds. So I am pulling up my reference pictures of it, just like the sketch and also the picture I 
took of him, obviously, that I'm using as the main reference picture. Now I'm going to start mixing the colors for his wrinkles and everything. It's just a mix of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and some ultramarine blue to desaturate it a little bit. I might end up adding some green as well. It's important to know how much water you need to add in order for it to be opaque enough. I have quite a bit of water in here because I want to work up the opacity as I go. All right, now I'm gonna go in and I have my reference picture just pulled up and zoomed in on him so I can see where I want to put this color. So that is what we're looking at right now. I still have a lot of this color left, so I'm gonna just start adding it to his lower wrinkles. All right, so just adding some water to the shade that we mixed for all those wrinkles. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna add even more blue to it to make it more of a, a dark gray shade, blue and burnt umber. Just gonna keep mixing those together. It makes pretty much a black if you get it mixed enough, but I don't want it to be too cool toned or too black. I want it to be a little bit brown because in the areas where his fur does shift, it's not like exactly black. It's just like a very warm gray, so it's kind of like a grayish brown color. This color that I just got is just about perfect, and now I'm just gonna go in on the areas that his fur changes color. a little bit of more color to my mixing tray here making the color again and then now I'm picking it up and I'm going in on his little muzzle area I'm gonna do his lip pretty dark and then now I'm going to do the rest of that area and for this I am kind of going in the fur pattern just because it is this area it is very obvious where his fur is going you can't really see it like once I put it down but it is kind of there I am going to wet my brush and blend out the sections that I did over here so they kind of blend together a little bit better I think that looks pretty good. The next step I'm going to take is I'm getting this more another round brush. It is slightly smaller, but a little bit more fat at the bottom and thin at the top. I'm going to make a more cool toned like black color that's pretty opaque for his nose. Again, it's just burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna outline it. I definitely did not plan on it being this watery. We will have to go back over it. I'm gonna start adding more pigment to my mixing tray in the area that I made this black color and I'm not adding any water because I want it to be more creamy, more pigmented. I'm going over again. There we go. Adding more ultramarine blue and burnt umber to make more of that color, just with some burnt sienna added for warmth. And I'm going to go on his mask now and do all of the very shaded areas
All right, I'm gonna leave the mask as is for now because it needs to dry before I can really go at it with anything else. But using the shade that I used on the mask, I'm gonna go in on his muzzle area. I'm leaving the white and pink section completely bare because I will be going in with a white gel pen. That is how I do the white details or just adding detail back in. I will be adding some white fur in that area. But right now I'm just gonna go and darken up my creases where his wrinkles are, blending them out as I go. take a little break for you it will be like not even a second but for me it will be probably like almost an hour I'm gonna let everything dry before I go in with anything else and then reevaluate and we'll go from there so I'm back had to put a sweatshirt on it's a little chilly in my apartment today it's raining the lighting is a little off too just cuz it's so cloudy but we're gonna get started again. All of my paint has dried over again because I took quite a long break. So I'm just adding some water to these colors that I had already mixed. Going back in with this darker shade down here at the bottom that we are doing for his mask, I'm gonna go back in and darken it up even more. some more shadow to this area by his nose. Right, and I'm gonna wet my brush, pat it, wet my brush again, blend it out a little bit. All right, that is looking really good. I'm gonna just kind of do a little outline right there and over here. Now that all my colors are kind of dry from the little break I took, I'm gonna go in with Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue. You know, the two I've been mixing to make my black-ish colors. I'm gonna make it more of a blue tint this time and trying to pick up more pigment so it's not as watery this time. I'm gonna go in on his nose and just really try to get those darker areas. Because there's so much texture, I'm not exactly doing strokes. I'm kind of stippling just because his nose, like it's, you can see a lot of texture in it, if that makes sense. All right, I'm liking the way that's looking. So I just filled in that nose area a little bit. I'm gonna darken it up more later with a smaller brush. Grabbing another round brush, I am going to get this yellow ochre and I'm picking up a lot of color. I'm gonna add some ultramarine blue, picking up a lot of color again, making sure that I'm really loading my brush with color as I add it. Burnt umber. I'm gonna start going in on shadowy areas again. to do is I'm gonna start mixing his collar color. It's gray, so I'm gonna do burnt umber and ultramarine blue, and I'm literally just gonna fill that in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is with this brush, I'm going to make his eyes. So I'm taking that same exact color that I did for his collar, and I'm just adding more burnt umber, some burnt sienna to really warm it up, some yellow ochre, and then some more burnt umber to darken that. Maybe just a little bit of ultramarine blue to desaturate it. 
All right, and with this, I'm going to take my really small brush because I don't want to get too big of a brush. You can barely see, I'm gonna put it over here so you can kind of see. It's really small detail brush. I am going to pick up this color. I'm gonna completely dry off the brush and pick up this color and I'm just outlining his eyes. All right, that is all I'm going to do for that now. I'm gonna let that dry. And now I'm gonna go about his ears. He has some darker spots in his ears. Getting a very light wash of pink. I'm gonna go in the white sections, just with a very light wash of this pink color. It is just cadmium red and a lizard crimson. And it's really gonna add something. I'm adding a little bit more. All right, I'm loving the way his ears look. All right, we're gonna just do a little dab and his eyes are dry, so I'm gonna flip my palette over so I can use this mixing tray side. I'm gonna use my detail brush on the eyes, but I'm gonna use this brush to mix the colors. All right, really drying off my detail brush. I'm gonna pick up as much color as I can. I'm gonna go around the very outside of his eye. All right, so it's starting more and more to look like Morty. I'm going to get on this side. I'm gonna add just a dot of water, dry my brush, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. All right, that is pretty black going in the nostrils. I am going in with my detail brush on to try and make some more black, but I'm not wetting it whatsoever. I want it to keep it as creamy as possible so it's nice and pigmented. All right. Now, I'm going back to his collar. It's completely dry. Switch up this shade here. Picking up the color, I'm going in on his eye again. Adding more dimension to some of the wrinkles. a really pigmented black shade for his collar. That is probably where I'm gonna leave it for his collar. I'm gonna use this really dark black color that I just mixed for his collar on his eyes now. That looks pretty good. The last thing I'm gonna do for his eyes, add a light wash of ultramarine blue over them to just desaturate them. All right, so I just darkened up his mask a little bit more. I'm going in and I'm going to do the same thing around his eyes.
the very last thing I want to do is get cerulean blue on my brush just the smallest amount and go in the bottom line of that highlight I have really been looking at this as it dries and I really want to darken up some of these areas more because I'm, look I'm looking at the reference picture and I don't want it to be too light. So I'm getting more, even darker black tones. for the white detail. I'm gonna finish off this painting adding some stark white highlights with my white gel pen. I'm pulling up the reference picture to find places where the highlights are most present and I'm going to just follow those. I'm starting with the nose. do to really finish off this painting is sign it. All right. And that finishes off my painting of Morty. Cue the montage now. Is this Morty painting all complete. I absolutely love the way that it turned out. It looks just like my little Morty boy. I had an absolute blast filming this for you guys. This is my first ever little paint with me kind of video and I really hope to do some more of these in the future. I never get to really make art for myself anymore so it was really nice to just make something for me and take you guys along with me and show you guys my process when I go about making a watercolor pet portrait. If you guys liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, click the red subscribe button to subscribe to my channel, and click that bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. And I think that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. It was a blast filming this for you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!